Welcome back to another IM Users video. All right, so there's been a lot of questions over the past couple of weeks about how to get your IM set up on the network. And the advantages of setting yourself onto the network are pretty self-explanatory. You get virtually limitless storage. If you have multiple IM systems, they can all share the same files. You get almost instantaneous backups as your network gets backed up automatically. Uh, and you also have the capability to use the offline software, store those files somewhere on the network, and then have the IM actually pull up the files. So what we need to do is, before we start on your network, we need a couple of things. First, we need to know where we want to actually save the files to. So we may need to make a new folder somewhere on one of the server drives. Second, we need to make sure that that folder is shared. Uh, if it's unshared, then we're not going to be able to see it on the IM. Third, we need to know the user accounts that are going to be able to access that specific server location. Now, it can be multiple users or it can all be one user. It's up to you guys. But you need to make sure that every single one of those users has both read and write protection uh, and authorities to that actual folder. Lastly, we need a dedicated IP address for the IM itself. So what we're going to do is come down to optional settings and you go into communication. Under communication, you're going to type in the actual IP address, the subnet mask, and the default gateway. So I have those already typed in here. These are the ones that I was just assigned and the gateway for that. If you don't know what your gateway is, it's usually the same thing as the IP address. It just ends in a 1 at the very end. Lastly, come down to Start Network Sharing and turn that on. Once you've done all that, you'll hit OK. The system will reboot. Uh, to set that actual IP address into the system itself. Once you come back in, you're ready to set up yourself to the actual folders. So what you're going to do is come under Folder Settings. In here is where you're going to actually type the exact path that you need for the IM. Now, the system is a domainless controller, meaning that if you're behind some sort of a domain, you do not need to change the domain on this system. We just do everything through IP addresses. So what we're going to do is simply click on the folder path area. You then type in the actual IP address that you want. So you put two back falling slashes. It's the button that's usually next to your backspace, just a little bit over the enter key. Then we type in the actual IP address. This is the IP address of the server or the specific computer that you're trying to link into. So in this case, it happens to be just another computer that's here on my network that I've set up put in another slash and we're going to hit add update. Now at this point the system is going to go out try to connect to that specific folder or that specific location. It's going to come back and prompt us for a username and password. So it's come up and said okay in order to get access to this we need to enter in our username and password. Now this system is behind a domain. So what you need to do is type in the actual domain itself. So this domain is KANJ and then we're going to type in our actual username. We then put in our password. Now there's a remember password button down here. If you want to make it so that every time somebody connects to the system they have to re-enter that username and password, just do not select remember password. If however you want it to do it automatically, just click remember password at this point. From here, hit OK. It's going to send those credentials back onto the server. It takes it a couple seconds to make an approval and then it'll come back and let us know when we can move on. Okay, so we're on to the server. From here I can open up the folder for that actual network drive. Here is the actual folder that I had set up. So here is that key ends folder. You can open that up. Now this is a shared folder on this machine. And I want to store that under RM settings. Now you can set whatever it is you want. In this particular case, I have a bunch of programs already saved in here from when I'm using the offline editor software. Hit OK. And it is now set to that specific path. Once we're all done, we hit OK. And it'll accept that path. Give it a second to finish processing. And we'll show you what we're going to actually do once you have that path set up. So great, now we're ready to go. So we can go into either measurement settings or our multi-measurement multi mode. I'm going to go into multi, uh, measurement settings mode here. Anytime I open up a, f a program now, there's a drop-down menu. 
So you have two options. The first is the default folder, which is your E drive. That's the actual IM's hard drive itself. And then after that, you have the name of the folder, and here it is. There's that IP address location, so I can go ahead and request that. And here is every single one of those programs that I wanted to be able to pull up from the server itself. And here are all the programs that are on the IM's hard drive itself. If you want the system to default directly to the network location, just make sure that this E drive is empty. It'll automatically default to your network location from there. We'll take a look at a couple of other different issues you may run into as far as networking, but as far as the simplest set of network, that's it. That's setting up an Active Directory domain controlled network, uh, which is what probably 95% of the United States uses. So if you have any questions, post up some comments and uh, we'll see you there.